Okay, so today I want to travel back in time and use those tiny little displays from Hewlett Packard called HP DL1414 because while they are small and old and obsolete, they just look great. And it's one of those displays where it's almost impossible to simulate this kind of look, this kind of feeling with any modern display technology. And I've had a similar feeling when I was using VFD displays in this video and those 5x7 dot displays in this video. But back to today's displays. They are sometimes called bubble displays because they have those small little bubbles to act like a lens to magnify those characters, because again, those are very tiny. My particular displays seems to be manufactured in, uh, let me see, 1998 and 1999, but I believe that the first HP DL1414 display was made in 1978, so 47 years ago. So my displays are quite new, only 26 years or so. Now I have found this unit, this module on Aliexpress that has two of those displays and you should be able to control those using the serial connection, which should make everything very simple. But before we try that, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay. And that's because if you make projects like this, sooner or later you might need PCB or maybe PCB assembly or SMD stencils. And in all of those cases, PCBWay has you covered, they offer all of those services for a reasonable price. On top of that, they offer services like CNC machining or 3D printing. And if you use the link down in the description, you can get 10 PCBs for free, only paying for shipping. So thank you PCBWay and let's get back to our project. Again, this module should be possible to be used with the serial connection, so I'll first try it with my PC and then with the Arduino board. For PC, we need the USB 2 serial connection board, oftentimes called USB 2 UART or USB 2 TTL. The TTL stands for the transistor to transistor logic and it tells us that the used voltage will be some voltage that microcontrollers are using, usually 5 volts or 3.3 volts, but it could be our voltage as well. And you can see that on the board itself, it says 5 volts, so we need the 5 volt USB 2 TTL board. By the way, sometimes you can find a switch on the USB 2 TTL board to switch between different voltages, which is the case of this board where you can switch between 3.3V or 5V logic. As for the connection, ground should go to ground and VCC should go to VCC, so 5V to 5V. And then we have two data lines, the TX for transmit data and the RX for receiving the data. And those should be connected in a way that the TX is connected to the RX and the RX should be connected to TX. And once I have everything connected, I will connect the USB to TTL board to my PC using the USB cable and then I need to run some serial terminal application. And if I've seen any of my older videos, you know that my favorite tool is called RealTerm. It might be slightly harder to use, I agree that the UI is not so great, but it's free and has a lot of different cool functions. The first thing that we need to do is to connect to the USB to TTL board in the port tab and we need to know some parameters for the connection. The port will most likely be the highest one, in my case that's port number 18, but we still need to know the speed which is the baud rate and all the other options. And if I open the Aliexpress page, there is some documentation down here, but unfortunately only in Chinese, but that shouldn't stop us from copying this picture. Opening Google Translate and selecting Images, and select Paste from Clipboard, and based on this image, it looks like that the baud rate should be 9600 bouts, so let's just set the baud rate to be 9600 bouts. Then the stop bit should be one person, I guess that's one bit, so stop bit should be one bit. There is nothing saying about the data bit, so I'll keep it to 8 bits, which is kind of default settings. And then there is this check, which is the parity check, and it's being displayed in a red color. And I think that the reason is because the even parity is not the default option. It's usually set to none, so I'll just change it to even instead. And then unclick and click the open button to open the connection. There is also a second image on the Aliexpress page and I don't think that this one needs translating. It shows which bytes we need to send to show the hello message on the display. And it looks like that we need to first send the FE and FD, which is the kind of a, like a header. And then we send the position, it goes from 1 to 6, but it could go from 0 all the way to 7 because we have 8 different characters. And then we send the content of the character itself. So let's try that on our display to send the very same message from a real term. I will jump to the send tab and if you want to send hexadecimal numbers, we need to type in 0x, so 0xfe, then 0xfd, 0x01, that will be the first position, and then 0x48 for printing the H character. 
and let me actually minimize this window so I can see the real drum application as well as the display. And if I click the send numbers button, it will send those bytes to the display and we should see the character H on the second position. And just because this seems to be the case, let's continue also with the other characters. So the next character with the index of 2 will be 45 for the E character. So let's send the numbers. Then the position number 3, that will be 4C. Again, send the numbers, that will be L. And that will be also on the position 4. So on the position 4, send numbers, that's another L. Then 5, that will be 4F, 4O character. And finally the position number 6 and that will be 21 for the exclamation mark so send the numbers and we have the complete message shown on the display. Let's also try to send some different characters and we have this table to help us out. So we were for example sending the character E which is the hex value of 45. And the hex value of 45 is the binary value of 01000101, which is matching the position inside the table, which is also 0100 and then 0101. Which means that if I want to, for example, print this nice asterisk, it should be 0010 and then 1010. And if I type this value inside the calculator, so 00101010, that's the hexadecimal value of 2a. So if I try to print 2a on the first position, which is the position of 0, and click send numbers, I can see this nice star on the first position, and I can also try the last position, which will be the index of 7, and again click the send numbers. And we now have the star also at the end of the message. So I think this works without any problem, so let's try to use this display also with the Arduino Uno board. The connection with the Arduino Uno board is very similar to the connection to the USB to TTL board, meaning that we should connect the ground to ground and the VCC to VCC, so 5 volts to 5 volts. And then we need to connect the RX and TX to the serial connection on the Arduino board and it's being listed on the PCB. You can see that the pins 0 and 1 are RX and TX pins. However, I will not connect those pins yet and there is a reason for that. When you upload a new sketch to the Arduino board, there is this chip which is the USB to UART chip, USB to serial, very similar chip as in our previous board, which takes the USB data and sends those into the Arduino chip using the serial connection. And this serial connection are those very same pins, so the pins 0 and 1. That means that during the upload process, there will be some data on those two pins, and if we keep the display connected, it might fail to upload the new sketch to the Arduino board. So I will not connect it just yet, and I will jump to the Arduino IDE. Actually, let's open the Arduino documentation, because we want to use the serial communication, and we already know that for the Arduino Uno, we are using pins 0 and 1, but in order to use a serial communication, we need to first call the begin function. And most of the time, we would just call the serial.begin function with the speed parameter. But at this time, we need to also use the configuration, because again, we are not using the default value, which is this one, being the serial with the 8 data bits and no parity check and 1 stub bit. But for our settings, we want to use 8 data bits and even parity check and 1 stub bit. So it will actually be this one. So I'll just copy the serial.begin function and paste it into the setup function into new sketch and set the speed to be 9600 bouts. And again, the configuration should be this one. So just again, copy this into our sketch for the configuration. And then we want to send the same message using the serial print line or serial print function. So let's just type in serial.print function. And to send hex values, we need to use the escape character, the escape sequence of being the escape x to send the hex data. It will be again fe and then the escape character fd and 0, 01 and finally 48. And let me just type in all those individual characters based on the image on the right side. And maybe after we send the message, we can wait a while, for example, one second using the delay function. And I think that's all that we need as a starting point. So let's just connect the Arduino board and select it from this drop down menu. And then hit the upload button. Once the sketch is uploaded, let's also connect the TX pin from the Arduino, which is the pin number 1, to the RX pin on the board on the display. And we do see the H character on the second position, but we don't see the rest of the message. 
And since restarting the Arduino board doesn't seem to help, I think that the problem is that we need to slow down a little bit when we are sending the data. So let's jump back into the Arduino IDE. And let's put a small delay between sending those individual characters, for example, I don't know, maybe like 10 milliseconds, and then try to upload it one more time. And now we do see the whole hello message, so now it works without any problems. So let's try to see if we can change our sketch to send any character easily from the Arduino. And you will notice that if I again show this table and also the ASCII table, and take a closer look at the space character, that one seems to be the binary value of 0010000, 000 000, which is the hexadecimal of 20. And by the way, I haven't noticed that the hexadecimal is actually displayed in here as well, so 20 in hexadecimal, which is matching the 20 hexadecimal in the ASCII table. And in the very same way, the underscore character is the hexadecimal value of 5f, which is of course matching the hexadecimal value of 5f inside the ASCII table. So the supported character set is the subset of the ASCII table starting from the space character going all the way to the underscore character and not having access to those lowercase characters and some of those symbols. So let's try to send those characters from the Arduino code to the display. I will comment out this section and maybe just borrow one of those lines, but I will not send the last byte because we want to send it based on this table. And to send it a byte value, we can use the write function. So let's just copy the serial dot write function into our sketch. And let's just again say that I want to send the asterisk symbol, which is the decimal value of 42. But I will also try to send it on the next position in the hexadecimal value, which is the hexadecimal of 2a, so 0x2a. And finally, I will also send it on the next position as the actual character. And for that, I will use a single quote and type in the asterisk symbol. So those are just three different ways how to send the very same character using the decimal value, the hexadecimal value, and using the actual character. So let's just upload this to the Arduino and see what happens. And indeed, we should see three star symbols on the display. So let's update the sketch one more time to not send individual characters, but to send the whole string of eight characters. And for that, I need to first define the string and let's call it message. And the string with the lowercase s, the C style string, is just the array of characters. And again, we need eight different characters, but for the C style string, the last character should be the null character. So actually, we need nine characters. And let's just predefine this string with some value, for example, Arduino, and that's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so maybe one more character, exclamation mark, like so. And I want to print this message one by one. And for that, I will of course insert the for loop, and instead of using the i for the variable, I will actually use pos for the position, and set it to zero. And while the position is smaller than eight, I will increase it by one. And then I will first write the FE character, so 0xFE, then the FD, that's for the header, then I will write the position, and finally I want to write the character from the message string, and of course the index will be position. I will still include a small delay of 10 milliseconds, and I think that that should be all that we need, so let's just upload this to the Arduino. And sure enough, after a few seconds, I do see this message on the display. So we know how to send the string to the display, but how do we actually set the content of the string? Because jumping back into the Arduino IDE, I cannot just say that the message equals some string, because if I do so, equals Arduino, and try to upload it to the Arduino, I will see the error message because we cannot assign the value to the array. So what we need to do instead is to use a dedicated function being the strcpi for string copy. And we want to copy something into our message. And the message could be, for example, again, the Arduino, but now with the asterisk. And if I upload it to the Arduino board now, and let me actually disconnect the display and connect it again, I only see the first and the last character. So something is wrong, and that's because the message is the Arduino with the uppercase A, but the rest of the message is lowercase, and this display, again, unfortunately cannot show lowercase characters. 
So let's make one more update to the Arduino code to handle lowercase characters, actually to convert the lowercase characters into the uppercase characters. And I'm not quite sure if there is a dedicated function for that, but we can as well say that if the decimal value of the character is bigger than 97 and lower than, let me see, the Z character 122. In that case, I will subtract 32 and 97 minus 32 is 65. So by subtracting 32, I should convert the lowercase into the uppercase. So inside the Arduino code, I will add the if statement saying if the message with the index position is bigger or equal 97, that's the lowercase a, and at the same time, if the character inside the message is smaller or equal 122, that's the lowercase z character, we need to convert the lowercase to uppercase, and again we do that by subtracting 32, so we will send the message but minus 32, and if the character is not inside this range, we will just send it as is. So with this change, let's upload it one more time. And we should again see the Arduino message on the display. Unfortunately, you cannot create your own characters or light up those segments individually, so you are quite limited on what you can show on this display, but I think it still looks great. As I talk, let me show you all the characters, and for some unknown reason, the digits are only half the size. I don't know if there is some technical limitation why they couldn't take the whole space. The display is not sending any data back to the Arduino, so you actually don't need to have the RX on the Arduino connected to the display, so it's perfectly fine if you only connect three wires. Finally, you can buy those displays without this module, like the you know standalone displays that you can use with the Arduino. I think I've seen some libraries as well. It will just take more Arduino pins and probably slightly more complicated compared to using the UART connection. Anyway, that's it for today. If you have any questions or comments, please put those down in the comment section. As usual, all the source files are on GitHub. The link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.